So let's talk about yeah. this. Let's talk yeah. about the book because I have seen you everywhere online uh, with this book and little. I saw you at the uh, the Harris rally. Yeah, uh, last week yep. with the little signs related to the book, and yep. so tell us all about the book and tell us all about what's what what you're doing with that. Yeah, you know it's a it's a deeply personal story, Jason, um, and I'd love for you to sign it, join the you know uh, uh, join the signatures, the support that are inside. It's a deeply personal story. I'm one of the 11 million undocumented Americans in this country, and it's been very power. It's been a very powerless feeling. Mm -hmm. um, my family under the Trump administration, my sister got detained by ICE and deported. And then uh, I got a you know deportation order, and my mm -hmm. parents did too. And so uh, it was in 2017. I had just finished college. I had just finished uh, an amazing sprint uh, helping launch Uber in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I received a, a fifty thousand dollar grant from the National Science Foundation, and I literally had to leave the country like a week before going to NSF training. To, mm -hmm. So I just felt like my whole world was shattered because I didn't you know. Growing up as an immigrant in America, I was here since I was two. So I yep. felt like super American. Like, yeah, I, I didn't I, even realize. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even realize the gravity of what the situation actually meant until all of it came yeah. down. And so I go live to Europe with my family. We rebuild our lives. I was able to come back to America because I was married. How, how long were you guys gone? Uh, well, my parents are still gone. My sister as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I was gone for like a year and a half. Yeah, that's kind of what I remember. Because I think we met right before that the first time. Yeah. And then, uh, and you had to rebuild your business overseas. Oh yeah, that was also a rough experience. Yeah, tell us about that. Oh, uh, you know, it was it was tough because uh, it wasn't the same. Like uh, like Vegas, I'm really grateful for Vegas as a community. I consider a lot of these folks my family. Um, and so, you know, I've been mentored and supported by the U UNLV and the ecosystem here. Being dropped in a new country where I didn't know anybody, I didn't understand the culture, didn't understand the business environment was definitely a challenge. I implemented a lot of the same things. Like I knocked on over 400 doors. I attended every business meeting I could. Um, I was like cold calling folks and I wasn't really uh, penetrating through the market. It wasn't until I started going on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and I started refocusing on like a more global approach. So mm -hmm. I was like reaching out to people in Malta as well as in America and around the world. Yeah, because you were in Malta. Yep. And this wasn't yep. like you're like, okay, well, bad deal. Where do I go? They were like, you have to go here, right? No, no, it was, uh, it, yeah, it was bad deal. Where do I go? It was, okay. Uh, because, and we picked Malta because it was an English speaking nation that was uh, affordable to live okay. in. Okay. Yeah. And then how did you end up getting back? Yeah, so is that, I, is that a story you can tell online? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it is very confusing, and I, I don't, even, you know, it's by the grace of God or grace of ice that I was able to come back. Yeah. Uh, I was married, uh, and my uh, ex-wife, we we were traveling back together, and so she spon uh, she applied to sponsor me to come okay. back. Okay. Yep. Yep. But that case, and I talk a little bit about it in the book. Uh, ended up going nowhere. My case got denied, mm -hmm. and. Um, and so now I'm kind of in a limbo situation. Okay. And so that sense of feeling powerless is what led me to write this book and okay. start documenting my story, uh, as well as the story of other immigrants, so I can speak truth to power from a position of power. Because okay. I think it's very easy to hear what's going on in the news and not realize that we're talking about actual people in our neighborhoods. Yeah. One out of 20 households in America are either led by an undocumented person mm -hmm. or have undocumented people in the house. I, I didn't know it was that high. Yeah. That's a that's a staggering number. It so. is, yeah. It's almost five percent. Yeah, the population. Yeah, that's that's a I I had no idea. Um, all right, well, tell us a little bit more about what's in the book then. That's a, yeah. a that quite a quite a tale. Glad you're back with us. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, I believe in an in an America that's inclusive and welcoming, mm -hmm. and that's and that's not just my belief. You know, since President George Washington through mm -hmm. President Obama, that has been the theme of 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 America as a nation mm -hmm. of immigrants and a nation of laws, and so. I wrote the book kind of doing an assessment on the current immigration policies mm -hmm. and then um, making a call to action for immigration reform. And that's why I've been out there campaigning to just keep immigration as a top issue in the nation. But but, you know, change the narrative so that we can create pathways to citizenship mm -hmm. for the 11 million undocumented folks mm -hmm. and create a you know, immigration as a system has constantly broken because all of the fixes have been temporary. Yeah. And so if we can. Uh, call for comprehensive reform that is inclusive mm -hmm. and and puts new Americans on a path to contributing mm -hmm. to society. I think we can maybe actually solve this problem for real. This okay. Time. So what are what are the steps? What are the first steps we're going to take here uh, in our community in Las Vegas to to help with that? 
Yeah, you know, it's going to be tough. I would say, you know, what thing we're lucky about is that we can talk to our legislators, whether they're Congress folks or U.S. senators or their mm -hmm. local assembly and state senate, and just advocate for immigration. You know, uh, educate yourself about the topic. You can, if you're an immigrant or you know an immigrant, I'd love to interview you to share your story with me. And you can go to butterfliesmovefreely.com. Okay. And, of course, vote. Like, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Yeah. I can't vote. I'm not an American citizen, but uh, your vote is powerful. So go out there and vote and think about the people who your vote's going to impact. Yeah, I think that's important. Uh, again, we, we, we won't tell you who to vote for, but it's very important to partic excuse me, participate in the process yep. and uh, just, just get out there and do it and uh, you know, make the decision that you think is right. But um, we'd, rather, we'd rather you voted than didn't vote yeah. if, you're, if you're eligible to vote. So yeah, yeah. 